Damn. Nice, Pete. What? I saw you checking out that girl's butt. What? I was just checking out her yoga pants. Pete. I was thinking you'd look really good in yoga pants. Uh huh. I was like trying to check out what brand it was. Like I was looking at her form on deadlifts. They were all messed up. Do you think she has a nicer butt than me? Well, it definitely doesn't look like a pancake. Did you just call my butt a pancake? Well, I mean... What can I do? You gotta try New York Muscle Radio's Glutelicious program. Glutelicious? Yeah, you'll finally get a celebrity booty, like all the other girls following the program. Fine, I'll do it. But don't get jealous when other guys check out my Glutelicious ass. Glutelicious, your guide to getting a celebrity booty in 12 weeks. Now available exclusively at NewYorkMuscleRadio.com. New York's very own muscle building coaches, Anthony Bevilacqua and Pete Kacharian, proudly present to you New York Muscle Radio. What's up, guys? New York Muscle Radio, episode number 127. 127. It's your host, Anthony Bevilacqua, along with my co-host, Big Pete Kacharian. If you're a new listener, welcome to the best muscle-building and fat-burning podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, and all the other podcast platforms. Today's topic is going to be a really, really cool one. It's fitness photography secrets revealed. So we're gonna, we have on a fitness photographer here. He's actually one of my clients. And um, he moved to Cali, and he's all about that whole Hollywood lifestyle now. But he is coming on, and he's going to reveal how to take good quality pictures. Because you know, we all dr- we have Lamborghinis of like tight bodies, you know, and you want to showcase that the best. And I take horrible pictures of myself. I'll be the first to admit that. So I'm excited to have him on today, so we could learn more and more about what to do and what not to do in a picture to showcase the best you ever. Big guy, you love taking pictures of yourself, you vain bastard. <laughs> it's true. I do. And you know what? Um, it's funny because when you mentioned the idea of this podcast topic, at first I thought about it and I said, you know, I don't really know how much photography plays a role in fitness and bodybuilding. And then I thought about it for a second. I said, you know what? Actually, it's one of the most important things, especially right now with how popular social media is because people have built their whole business on their body and then being able to display that on social media. So if they have their physique or they have their message or whatever it is that they're putting out there, but they can't put it out there properly with the correct photos, that could be the difference between you being nobody and you being somebody. So, you know, the reality of it is is that it's almost as important, if not possibly more important than building your physique. If you can't display it, like you said, if you have a Ferrari and you're trying to show it off and you can't actually show it off, you know, what good is it? to be a Ferrari. It might as well not be a Ferrari. Might as well have a Civic. Yeah. But yeah, I agree with you, man. And you know, one thing that I'm trying to really do with this podcast is, you know, we always try to give good quality information, um, you know, no BS type stuff and always have a takeaway for our listeners every podcast. And I'm trying to think outside of the box with this. That's why we've had on other people who, you know, we've done life after fitness and we've done like other aspects of fitness because fitness isn't just about going in the gym and lifting weights. There's a lot of things that encompass it. So I think this is one of, this is probably... I would say the only podcast in the fitness realm that's covering different things outside of quote unquote, you have to do this many sets or this many, you know, this many calories because I'm really trying to encompass everything with fitness. And I think that that's what's going to draw more people in because it's not only about the sets and reps, you know, so and yeah. like we said, the photography portion of it is important and I can't take a picture for shit. So I'm excited to learn about this today. Yeah, because you know what it is too. There's many people that are involved in in fitness do it for different reasons. And many people, you know, the majority of people I think do it because they want to look better. Uh, But some people want to get stronger. Some people just want to feel better about themselves. And then other people do it purely for the aesthetics of it. You know, some people just want to make their body look better, especially for artistic purposes, for photos. Uh, I know plenty of people who have (laughs) I've spoke to who basically started getting into fitness and bodybuilding just because they want to look better on social media, you know? So whatever your reason is, uh, it always ties back, I guess, into uh, fitness goes hand in hand with looking better and feeling better. So taking better photos of yourself will display that. Exactly. But um, yeah, we also, remember guys, our seminar is coming up, so be sure to book that. You can head on over to NewYorkMuscleRadio.com. Um, they're selling out really quickly, so please, please, please book book now. 
We're trying to get a good head count as to what we need as far as food and other things go. So head on over to NewYorkMuscleRated.com. That's going to be, what's the date, Pete, again? I don't know November me. 19th on a Saturday. Yeah, so it's going to be a Saturday. And again, the time is to be determined, but it'll probably be earlier in the day. So this way you guys have the whole rest of Saturday night to go out and party. We should probably do a party after, Pete. That'd be cool. Uh, I'm excited for that, man. I think that's a great idea. Do a party after, yeah. The after party about. is uh, to be determined, but I'm sure if uh, we all get together, it's going to be a good time. Wow, that would be cool, actually. That would be really cool. See, our brain's always flowing on this podcast. But again, guys, if you're interested and you're semi within the area and can make it, I definitely would recommend coming out here and learning from us. And you're going to get 10 times more than what you would get from a normal podcast just based on that seminar. So again, guys, go to NewYorkMuscleRadio.com and pick up your ticket now. And our sponsored athlete program, which we've announced, uh, we're pretty much closed off. We've had a lot of people um, submit applications for sponsorships via email. So we're going to make the announcement October 17th. So the week of October 17th, we'll make an announcement on who our winner is. Yeah. Which Last actually, by the time this podcast out, it'll probably be the 17th. Possible, so probably yeah. within, the next, <laughs> within the next podcast, we'll have the, uh, the answer to that. Yeah, last year when we did this, we were able to sit down pretty much uh, for uh, like an hour or two just to s sift through the entries we had. Now, I think this is going to take us almost a whole day to, to go through all of them. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have because to... we have a lot of good people that actually signed yeah. up for this, and I'm super excited to have new athletes here. And, you know, I'm just excited, man. So This podcast is growing beyond belief, and I can't believe how much it's growing, especially recently. Yes, recently. Yeah, it's been pretty We've consistently over the month since we started just uh, getting more and more people listening, following along. But lately, the last couple of months uh, seems to have caught, caught on a lot more to the point where, like like you said, we have so many people that have submitted just for the sponsorship program. It's going to take us a few hours at least just to start looking through all of them, sift through all of it. I also think it's funny. We also put out our new um, podcast image. And uh, we've gotten mm -hmm. things that said that I kicked you out of the podcast and replaced you with a girl because now our image is of a guy and a girl. Um, but I didn't kick Pete out of the podcast, guys. He's always going to be a – but from what I know, unless he turns into a real POS, um, he's going to be a signature part of this podcast. But um, we want to really – you know, we do, New York Muscle Radio is kind of like a hard name. And we want to attract some people to this podcast that aren't into the whole bodybuilding scene. So we figured if we changed the picture – it will uh, draw some more people in, so we yeah. kind of and I don't also to jump too, down the picture, but yeah. we kind of made it encompass more of just you know. Plus, we have a big female audience yeah. to us as well, and I don't want a lot of females to be put off by you know two douchebags on, a, on the cover. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what's really funny, and I, I was talking to you about this too when we first started. Uh, we both came from backgrounds of being competitive bodybuilders. You're a competitive powerlifter currently. Uh, we. You know, we wanted to put out the knowledge that we had based on our experiences to help other people. So in the beginning, we drew a pretty large crowd specifically of uh, bodybuilding competitors or people who aspired to be competitors or maybe hardcore fitness athletes. And then as the months went on, especially more recently, too, we just started getting so many more average people that just want to get in better shape. And that's, I'd say, predominantly our audience now. And they're asking us more for just the information to help them. You know, everybody, the information we we talk about applies to whether you're an average person or if you're a fitness competitor. But uh, a lot more people want information targeted towards people specifically for just looking better, feeling better, getting stronger, leaner, and living the flexible dieting lifestyle, not necessarily a hardcore bodybuilding athlete so well yeah listen i mean you know one it's very very hard to be a competitive athlete it's not an easy thing diet wise to do you know and it, i think for a lot the general purpose people more people would like to look like zach efron versus yeah. you know being three percent body fat with no energy to even stand up and that's kind of what happens when you're uh you know contest dieting yeah. but again if, if you never know if you're if your goal is to look like zach efron and you're, you're getting there and you decide you want to jump into a show and we can give you the advice on that too and i think that that's why you know, I like to pick topics that are a range of things. Yeah. You know, um, the bodybuilding nerds made a comment about us saying that, um, you know, that we're creating our own niche in this, and I mm -hmm. love that. But they also said like, oh, they couldn't, I probably couldn't even tell you who won the prog show. <laughs> and I, I meant to comment on their page because uh, I, I wanted to say like, yeah, I have no fucking idea. Who, yeah, who I, mean, I didn't even know prog had a show, and nor did I really care because I think that um, just in general, I kind of shifted away from mm -hmm. the whole bodybuilding thing. I mean, one thing with this sport is. It's very kind of 
<clears throat> selfish in a way. Yeah. I think like when you when you have the scope looking at everybody else, it's easy to get um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like when you look too much at other people, you kind of discourage yourself. Whereas if you just stop focusing on everyone right. else and just focus on yourself, that you're gonna get more progress doing that. At least for me, anyway. Yeah, no, no, I agree 100. percent You know, the best way I could sum up, I mean, if you know, I guess you could put it like that. We kind of have our own niche here. You know, it's different than we're not we're not strictly bodybuilding. We're not strictly uh, weight loss guys or, or bodybuilders or whatever. There's no there's no really name to describe what we do here but the best way i could describe it is this is just what me and you do on a regular basis you know what i mean these are exactly. topics that me and you talk about on a regular basis stuff that we try to apply to ourselves to improve uh stuff we could talk about from experience and just how we live our lifestyle so this is basically our lifestyle in a nutshell and anybody who wants to come along for the ride and apply this stuff and help you reach your fitness goals that's what we're here for Exactly, because you know it's funny you said that because I, if I could put it in general terms, I guess my goal is to look like Zach Efron every day, and then if I decide I want to compete in bodybuilding, well then I can go down that route. If I decide I want to do powerlifting, I can go that route. If I decide I want to do strongman, I yeah. can go that route. You know, because I, I feel like again, when you're when you're involved in this, you can kind of go any route you choose. But that's why I want to encompass everything with this podcast. Right. So that's yeah. why is that, that's why you guys have to subscribe to this podcast. You have to leave us a five star review because we're doing big things on this show. Yeah, I mean, I, my goal for anybody who listens to this, like I said, even with uh, everybody coming to the seminar, is you want to have the right knowledge to take your body in any direction anyway, that you yeah. do want to go. So if your goal right now is you just want to drop some weight because you're trying to get in shape and, and feel better, you should be able to do that. You should understand the process behind it. And if a couple months from now you have a goal where you want to step on a powerlifting platform so you want to get your, your total up to 300 pounds uh, across your bench squat and deadlift, you're able to do that. And if you want to step on a bodybuilding stage next year, you could do that. And then for the next uh, five to 10 years of your life, if you just want to look like Zac Efron, you'll know how to do that. I keep using Zac Efron as a thing, but I don't know. I just saw someone's picture with that. So that's yeah. why I don't know. It's stuck in my head. But all right, let's move on to the New York Muscle Radio quote of the day. And roll it, Pete. <laughs> so today's quote is actually from a song by Chumbawamba, and I think it's actually fitting, and I'll explain why in a second, but the quote is, I get knocked down, but I get up again, and you're never going to keep me down. Now, I love that quote. I love that line. I mean, it, me and Pete laughed about the song for like a good 20 minutes before this podcast, but um, the reason why I chose this quote today, I have no idea why it popped in my head, but today I was training, deadlift training, first week of my quote unquote intensity block leading up into my meet and for some whatever reason I was deadlifting. I mean I know why. I shouldn't say it for whatever reason, but um I got my flu shot on Saturday. It's it's Wednesday as we're recording this. And um I got my flu shot on Saturday and I've been feeling the effects of it. You know, so when you get a flu shot obviously you're getting part of the vaccine, whatever the the virus, and you kinda get sometimes flu like symptoms and I've been fighting I must have been run down before that and I've been feeling it ever since. So I've been fighting off this cold nonstop. So I um I went and did squats, you know, it was fine. I was feeling tight in my lower back the whole day prior to this. Um, then I went into deadlifts. First rep was good. Second rep was good. Third rep, my back spasmed. I managed to finish off the set. But, um, you know, it's just like, ugh, now my back's bothering me. And, of course, my mind starts to wander and race like crazy. Like, come on, man. I'm so close to the meat. But, again, I get knocked down, but I get up again, and you're never going to keep me down. There's nothing that could keep me down and keep me from my goal. I, I've done meets before with injuries, and I, I would prefer not to do a meet with injury. <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, hopefully this is just a little bump in the road, and I'll be able to move on from there. You know, knock wood. But, um, let me knock that wood. You hear knocking? I hear it. All right, so... But again, I, and I think that's the key in anything in life. Yeah. You know, life is always going to push you, but it's your job to get up and just keep going. Yep. I mean, in the night away. <laughs> there's not really much more to add to that other than the fact that I was laughing about that song because I remember being about, I don't know, like eight years old listening to that <laughs> song on my uh, my Sony stereo system. And it was probably on like a um, no, I, that's when that's when CDs were very popular yeah. you would have to go to like sam goodies or the whiz or i don't know if anybody knows oh, these nobody names. beats the whiz i don't know if anybody <laughs> knows those names uh but yeah you'd go to you go to the whiz and you'd pick up your chamba wamba cd and play it in your uh cd player your stereo oh god man that was a funny song i never really understood it but i just liked that line of the song and i was like yeah that's, that's fitting for today we'll throw it in there 
So again, guys, whatever knocks you down, your goal to get back up and just keep going. And it's never going to keep you down. So remember that. Remember Chumbawamba. Yep. When, 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 life, when life gets you down, remember Chumbawamba, guys. <laughs> I, did they only have one song? You know, that was one of those bands where they had a whole album, but you would buy you the album the one just, to, just to listen to the one song. Like, it's not like iTunes where you could just, you know, get the one song. You have to buy the whole CD just to play track number two. That's hilarious. I, I think it's funny that you remember that it was track number two. Oh, I don't know. I'm just... A, uh, I, it, it probably was. I could, <laughs> I would remember something like that and not remember what I did yesterday. Well, I could tell you from that um, the Eminem CD, the Marshall Mathers one, the the famous one that was out, that was out, especially when we were kids. Uh -huh. I could go literally go through what numbers I used to listen to constantly on that. You know? Oh yeah. Well, that you know, his albums was like I said back then. You would buy a CD just to play one track, but Eminem's albums you could listen from start to beat to, to yeah, from like, start like to song. No, let's see if you remember song number seventeen. Which album are we talking about? Marshall Mathers. The Marshall Mathers LP. Yeah. 17 come on man you know 17 actually i think it's 16 16 16 it's 16 the marshall mathers lp Ooh. come on man you gotta know this one it was ah see you didn't listen to the cd as much as i did then i'm drawing a blank here wait maybe i'll show you the cover quick marshall mathers lp the marshall mathers lp that's the one where he was sitting on his house on his porch right yeah 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 this one is this one yeah, this one. Oh. See it? Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Come on, man. You don't know 16? Is that, uh, I don't give a fuck? Nah. Kim. Oh, okay. Why, why do you think I remember that song? Sick, the, <laughs> most sick, track, the most sick and <laughs> twisted track on the whole you know, album. It's funny. We were actually talking about this and, you know, we were talking about music in general. We were saying, like, oh, man, these kids nowadays, they listen to all these stupid songs. And I'm like, Pete, you realize that one of the famous cds out when we were kids was marshall mathers lp oh, yeah. kim and we started laughing because then i put the song on and it's like i fucking hate you <laughs> that bleed bitch bleed oh yeah well the whole song is uh him so long <laughs> yeah it's a twist twisted song but that's the stuff that we grew up on what does that tell you about us exactly all right, let's move on to the shout-outs portion of it. So, again, guys, if you want a shout-out, you can head on over to Facebook.com slash New York Muscle Radio. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook. I'm at AB Fitness and Pete's at Jacked Fitness. And, uh, yeah, we'll give you a shout-out on the podcast. So today we're going to shout-out our newly found client. He was actually on our waiting list. His time came, and he just signed up with us. So um, prior to this, he actually prior to him us training him, he posted up in our group on Facebook. Um, that he hit a 425 squat, a 455 deadlift, and a 320 bench at 166 pounds, man. That's really, really awesome. That's a really good weight. Yeah, that's impressive numbers right there. Uh, and I can't remember the last time I was <laughs> that weight, what kind of numbers I was able to put up, but uh, it probably wasn't it probably wasn't at that <laughs> that level. Yeah, but I, I don't even think I was ever that weight. So, <laughs> but, uh, Yeah, that was pretty good. So shout out to him. And we're excited to work with him, actually. And we also got another shout-out here from Timmy Graf uh, Graffio. How do you say his last name? Graffio? Graffio sounds right. Yeah. So he posted up a picture on our group also of his transformation. Fat, too skinny to build. He lost 125 pounds of body fat in the two years in the making. So he says, thank you for the daily motivation. He's been listening to our podcast for quite a while now. And he really looks insane. Can't believe the transformation that he made. So shout-out to him. So like, that's really, really cool, man. Yeah, it's always I mean, nice when people take the information and apply it, you know? Yeah, well, that's that's the biggest thing. Again, we, we spoke about this before, but applying that information because a lot of people like to listen just for entertainment or to pass the time. And I mean, I guess, you know, some things could be useful for that, but your life will dramatically change if you apply the stuff that you, you listen to and absorb on a daily basis, you know? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, you have to take action. That's one of yeah. the most important things. All right, let's uh, move on to the listener question of the day. If you guys have any questions you want us to answer for you, you can submit it on our website, newyorkmuscleradio.com slash listener question. So today's question, what's up, guys? First, I want to say thanks for all the great info you supply with no BS. I drive seven hours to work and back home each week. Oh, each week. I was about to say seven hours a day. That sucks. And <laughs> <clears throat> always make sure that I'm about eight episodes downloaded before I go. I actually look forward to the drive now. My question is, can you change the physical appearance of certain muscles? I've always had rounder like pecs, but wanted the typical squarer pecs. After smashing YouTube, uh, the advice seems to be incline everything. 
I gave up on flat bench years ago and always focused on incline movements. And even though I built the top portion of my che- of my pecs, it did jack to change the shape. Apart from genetics, do, do these other accessory movements play even a uh, play even a part to change the physical shape of my muscles? So that was a shout out to Anthony May. That's a good question, actually, because uh, a lot of people will talk about doing certain exercises to bring out you know a certain. Uh, portion of the muscle a peak of the muscle you might be doing you know we talked about crucifix curls people talk about that uh, helping the peak and you know incline pressing is a different situation as far as bringing up the upper chest but you know to answer that question i'll give you a perfect example because uh you know his reasoning is he he wants to do more incline to bring up his upper chest and i spoke to you about this anthony um when we first took the photos that we ended up using one for the cover of cracking the flexible dieting code. Me and you were both hitting a side chest pose. And this was over the summer when we both died down a little bit. We were a little bit leaner. And it was funny because we were relatively, a, you know, we were close in weight. You might have had about 8 to 10 pounds on me, maybe a little bit less at the time. And we took a side chest shot together. And the biggest difference in the photo was your upper chest was just so much thicker and rounder than mine and that was really severely where i was you know i was losing if we were talking about a bodybuilding comparison in the photo and the funny thing about that was at that time my main exercise for my pecs were either an incline dumbbell press or an incline barbell press i was actually doing very little flat bench pressing and you had told me you know i haven't done incline in years you know and you were strictly doing just the flat press but the fact is your bench press was probably at the time roughly 50 pounds heavier than mine your max so you were just significantly stronger and you significantly bench pressed more frequently than i was training my chest you were probably doing it with more volume and overall your pecs were bigger and your upper chest was still thicker than mine so to answer that question there's very little you could do to change the shape but um, certain muscle groups where you're trying to bring out a certain part of it you're only going to get that part bigger by getting the entire muscle group larger so if your upper pecs are lagging you need to grow just bigger pecs in general yeah. Um, I mean, I really don't have much to add to that. You pretty much answered the whole question there fully. But I would say, you know, uh, it's always good to sprinkle incline in there, but you have to do kind of flat. That's going to be a basis for everything. Um, and I think you could, the only way you're going to develop a bigger chest is to do more flat because you're going to be able to use more weight and hence more volume over time using a flat bench versus an incline. So that's the only recommendations I have. But yeah, you pretty much answered that question. Yeah. So I wouldn't worry about too much about all these little exercises that people talk about to bring out a certain muscle group they're they're gonna do very very little and again they're gonna do nothing if you don't have that big compound movement in place and you're progressing over time with that especially something like the chest where you could handle tons of weight on a flat press um stuff like you know the people talk about doing certain exercises with foot positioning to bring out the outer sweep of your quad when if you add 100 pounds to your squat you're going to notice that outer sweep is going to get a lot bigger yeah exactly all right, man, then you pretty much answered that question. I don't got nothing else to add. I'm, for once, speechless. We could just uh, throw some Chamba Wamba in there and we'll... <laughs> we could, it takes a wix to drink. It we could take it out drink. with that. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take a short commercial break and we'll be right back with Fitness Photography Secrets Revealed. I get no doubt, but I get over again. Get over again. Get over again. Want anything special for your birthday? Just a decent cup of coffee. You're kidding. I'm serious. Honey, your coffee's undrinkable. That's pretty harsh. Well, so's your coffee. You know, the girls down at the office make better coffee on their hot plates. And he didn't even kiss me goodbye. You know, if I could just make a decent cup of coffee, I could relax. So, relax. Why don't you try coffee from buyproteincoffee.com? Tastes good as fresh perked. Good as fresh perked. And it has protein. 10 grams per scoop. I'll surprise Harvey for his birthday tonight. Hey, great coffee. Doesn't it taste good as fresh perk? Better. Better than those girls make at the office. Honey, their coffee can't hold a candle to yours. Coffee, the world's only instant coffee that's fortified with muscle building protein. Visit buyproteincoffee.com now. But I'll tell you what, when I'm done, my biceps are humongous. Humongous. My name is Anthony Bevilacqua, and I'm the host of New York Muscle Radio Podcast. My arms have been a weak point for years. When I started training, my arms measured 11 inches. Even after many years of hardcore training, nothing would get them to grow. With the help of my co-host, 
Big E, we set out on a mission to gain one solid inch to my arms in 12 weeks. In the greatest experiment of all. 12 weeks later, this program finally helped me get 18 inch arms. The 12 week arm experiment, the ultimate arm growth program, ebook, the audio book, and the workout video. Pick up your copy now on NewYorkMuscleRadio.com. What's up, New York Muscle Radio listeners? It's your co host, Big P. Kacharian, and I'm glad you're all listening. Put down the tilapia and asparagus. Learn how to get bigger, stronger, and leaner eating what you want. Pick up a copy of Cracking the Flexible Diet Co. exclusively at NewYorkMuscleRadio.com. But for now, let's get to the show. Hey guys, it's your host, Anthony Bevilacqua, and I just wanted to announce that my brand new personal training facility is now open. I'm currently taking on new clients in the Long Island, New York area. If you're interested in working with the best personal trainer in the business, head on over to abfitnesstrainer.com and sign up for your free consultation. Then you can understand why bodybuilding.com has named me personal trainer of the month. All right, guys, we're back. New York Muscle Radio, episode number 125, Fitness Photography Secrets Revealed. Today, another special podcast. We got on actually one of my clients, Bart Mastronardi. He's actually into photography and fitness photography specifically. So we're going to show you guys all the secrets on taking great quality pictures because what what's the sense of having a Ferrari if you keep the car cover on? You got to showcase your muscles and do them in the right way. So my good client, Bart, here, he's going to go over and tell us exactly what it takes to take good quality pictures. But Bart, what's up, buddy? How, how are you? He actually, I'm good. I'm actually, good. How are you client, guys? My client Bart here, he actually moved from New York. So this is New York Muscle Radio. He actually moved over to California. So he's on the other side of the world talking to us today. <laughs> so big guy. How's life in Cali? Cali's treating me very good. Los Angeles is a very good city. Um, I'm out here. I'm a college professor of film at the New York Film Academy. And uh, I have my own photography company now. And uh, as a filmmaker, it's important that we understand that lighting totally affects everything that we do. Uh, and lighting says a lot on many, on many levels. Um, so I'm looking forward to talking to you guys about lighting and everything, that uh, how to get the best quality photos and uh, how to showcase your own physical appearance, your body off with using proper light. So we're going to give everyone all the right secrets. Big guy, you there? Pete, I'm here, there? man. I'm, I'm sleeping ex- on us. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited for this one. You know, it's, it's funny because it's an interesting topic we're going to talk about today because it is uh, fitness specific, but more so in the sense of making yourself look the part. You know, a lot of people go to the gym, they eat well, and they want to get a better body. Uh, but like you said, there's a way to optimize how you look specifically on camera. So I think especially in today's day and age with the, you know, how popular social media is, this is going to be a pretty popular episode, I, I imagine. And what better way than having my client here, Bart Mastronardi. I mean, he actually, it's funny enough, he has the same last name as my wife. My wife's maiden last name. So, <laughs> But there's no relation, which is actually funny. Actually, there is. You guys have a, a, a similar cousin, I believe. Yes, we have. There's like a distant cousin in our family, so I just say that your wife is my cousin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it works. It's fine. You know, me and Bart are good friends, and he came to me for personal training way back when. So we became good friends ever since, and I've seen his whole fitness photography business kind of blow up. So I was like, I got to get him on the podcast because I think we all could learn something from it. And secretly here, I'm going to be honest, I take horrible pictures. I, I feel like I take horrible pictures because I'm just kind of the guy like, all right, I'll snap this picture. This looks good enough. And I throw it up on Instagram, you know. So I think this is going to be one of the podcasts where it's, I'm kind of being a little selfish here because I want to know what it takes to, have a, to take good quality pictures. So let's roll right into this. So Bart, yeah. why is it important to take good quality pictures? Um, I think with anything, you always want to have something to look at, and I think it kind of impresses upon people uh, what it is that you look like. I think it's. I think everybody today in today's day and age with social media and your phones and stuff, they take all these pictures and stuff. But I don't think people kind of know how to take a picture. Uh, um, and that's not to say that they're not photographers, but there's a difference between being an amateur and being a professional. And with most people, we're just taking pictures of ourselves and um, we just kind of throw it out there. And most people don't 
kind of understand the process of what it makes to make a really good quality picture. There's a difference between quality and quantity. And quality, to a degree, is going to deal with a lot of, one, the type of camera that you have, and two, the lighting. Lighting, you could have the best camera in the world, but if you don't know how to light it, it's going to, your images are not going to be quality work. Uh, so, you know, designing or at least getting a good picture is something that you can kind of enjoy. And lighting has a lot to do with that. It really does. It's actually the secret to photography. And it's a, it is an art form all on its own. I mean, I'm still learning. And the models that I get to work with, if I don't nail that lighting, in all honesty, it's not going to be a good photo at all. So I get, you know, I do panic sometimes when I'm taking photos of these incredible models and seriously some beautiful looking people. But if I don't nail the lighting for them, they're not going to like the image and then that's going to be the end of it. So when you are going to take a picture, you do got to, you kind of have to understand what the light is doing. Uh, it's, it's this organic thing that you got to kind of understand. And once you understand it, which is quite easy, uh, then you'll actually get a lot better pictures. So what kind of what goes into taking good pictures as far as lighting and angles go? Because I know angles are also important. Yeah, the thing with the camera, particularly iPhones, is that they have a very wide lens. And a wide lens is really to capture scope, like greater area, like say the New York City skyline or, you know, step back a little bit. But the problem with taking a picture with a very wide lens that's usually on your camera is that pe the, they're so wide that you have to get it far away from you to get a shot. But most people want selfies. And when you get a selfie, that camera is so close to your face. So anything that's wide in a lens, it will distort the image the closer you get to it. Hmm. So in order to avoid that, you would actually have to get a lens that is what we call as a long lens, otherwise known as a telephoto. And you would have to kind of back that lens up even further. But now what it does is it brings the image closer and it compresses the background, which then doesn't distort the facial features, giving it a very... Um, giving it a very more natural look, let's say. So our iPhones or our phones in general are really great for taking pictures, but if you're, but if you're a little bit further back, where selfies, everybody's lips look a little bit bigger, their faces look a little bit weirder because that's a wide lens very close to somebody's face, and that's why it looks a little funny. Uh, and then add, not the pro then add the fact that most people don't know how to light themselves, not all people, but the majority, they don't know how to light themselves, so then what happens is it, the, the picture comes out fuzzy looking, there's this noise, and their face looks funny, and then you're just like, this isn't a good picture. And you're like, what happened? So taking, you know, understanding... Why, have you been what following me around? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, when I turn that front camera on, that is the worst looking face I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> oh, I, I, I hate it. It's a rarity that I will take a selfie. If it comes out good, I, I'd be more than happy to post it and make a fun at myself about it. But that's the problem, is that these are wide-angle lenses. And a wide-angle lens is good for a close-up if you want to give the illusion that the character is maybe in a nightmare or a drug state of existence or there's something really wrong. So, you know, what I usually tell my students is you write your images with your lens and you paint your images with your light. So the lens is your, your pen. It's your tool to write with. So if we're using a wide-angle lens very close, we're kind of saying something. And if we don't know how to paint the light in there, then it doesn't look uh, as the quality just doesn't work too well. So I guess let's so, – so for people who are not into cameras and lighting and all this stuff, me, <laughs> how do you take a proper selfie then from a camera phone? So give, give us like a camera phone selfie 101 here. <laughs> so camera phone selfie 101. Number one, um, with your selfie, I would probably say your best bet is not to flip the camera around until you feel secure enough that you're in a location that it's going to be flattering to you. So even if you have that wide lens, you want to back that thing up just a little bit further than you can so this way your face doesn't look distorted. Um, and then once we get into talk about a little bit about lighting, we'll, we'll, you'll, you'll see how it kind of supports what we're talking about. Most people like to take the pictures in a mirror because... Now what you have is the option to zoom in or zoom out of the camera to bring the subject in closer or not and not have to worry about the wide angle lens distorting it. So I would say that probably makes sense. Sh shoot, your, shoot your selfie honestly in a very clean mirror. I mean it's really, it's really funny but there are some people who do selfies and they 
treat it as an art form. And when you treat it as an art form, there's going to be a lot more quality that comes to it. So what I would suggest is if you really want to take a selfie, a serious selfie, do it in a mirror, and this way you have more control over it. If you're with your friends and you're out and you just want to take a selfie, yeah, then that flipping the camera around and clicking it would be ideal because then you could get everybody into the picture and it looks kind of fun. Yeah, because it's but if you do, Yeah, yeah. But if you want to take a, a more serious approach to showing yourself off, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that in a way of showing yourself off with a selfie. I would say do it in a mirror so this way you have more control over now what the image is going to look like. Because you could walk closer to the mirror, you could work further, walk further back from the mirror, you could take the, the, um, the LCD monitor on your phone, you could zoom that in or you could zoom that out just with just like flicking your finger across the screen. So now you have more control. So I would say a mirror is definitely a proper tool for doing a selfie if you want to create that, you know, that, that nice selfie look that you're going for. Hmm. So now I guess this is perfect to lead into lighting because I was yeah. just going to say, so if I, I usually when I do, when I try to take a selfie, like a serious selfie of myself, and I feel funny saying that, but we don't mean that in any negative sense of the term as far as like taking a selfie to be vain or anything. But like I said, you know, you wouldn't have a Lamborghini and cover it. You want to show no. it off. So yeah. usually when I do take a selfie and I usually use the mirror because I just happen to like the way that looks and I, I can't hold the phone to do a, a selfie. It's just another story. But <laughs> um one thing I always notice is what I see in the mirror versus what the camera gets is so different, and I think that's because of the lighting. So let's yeah. let's get into lighting then. Yeah. So all right. So just before we get into lighting, just remember your all cameras are not designed equally. The iPhone 6s is a great camera that's going to give you great resolution with high megapixels. So that camera is going to give you really great quality image look. Uh, where I have the iPhone 5 still. I'm too too poor to get the next level. So my, <laughs> my picture, Yeah, well, I was about to say, you're not alone. You, <laughs> the, the, the problem is with the iPhone 5 is there's no quality to the, um, to the megapixels or the resolution. So there's always this noise, all these little particles that are kind of dancing around the image. So I can't stand taking pictures with that. Um, but to get back to what you were saying with the lighting, what we want to do with lighting is we want to understand that light is going to create two things. It's going to give us the lighted area and then there's going to have shadows. And if we, over, if we put light all over us, then it's kind of a flat looking image. So if we want to define the body parts, we want to kind of have a distinct area of light and shadow on our physical body. Where should the lights be? Um, you never want your light to be at your eye level. It should always be above the eye level because it's going to make the shadows fall down. Mm. And what you should always do is angle the phone so this way you get maybe on a 45 degree phone angle with a 45 degree light angle. And what, that is, what that's going to do, it's going to allow the shadows to go in one area and light to go in another. And that's going to actually give you some depth and texture to your muscles. So those, that shadow is going to seep into areas like, your, like a six-pack of abs. Those cuts are going to be shadowed in, which are going to pop the muscles out even more. So having a light at a particular angle is definitely going to kind of give more specific notice to certain body parts. And if you take a camera and you just put it to you like at a front, at a full front, like I think your your profile picture is, um, it'll kind of flatten your features out a little bit. Mm -hmm. But if you want to define a little bit more, always put it at an angle. So 45 degree angle is usually appropriate. You mean like tilt the camera down almost? I would say raise your camera up above your eye line a bit and then think of a protractor that we used to use in school. And now do the 45 degree because uh, 45 degrees would be at about um, where your eye would be in regards to uh, your arm's length. So if you hold your phone up, you can't hold it all the way to the side because you, you're going to get a side shot. And you can't hold it all the way to your front because it's just going to – your arm's going to get in the way. But if you put it to a 45 degree angle, you get, which is a little bit more of your face, uh, there, it depends on your arm, but you'll have one angle of your body closer to the phone than the other would. Oh, so your whole body's on an angle is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So your whole body will be a little bit on an angle. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. And then what happens is the same thing with the light. You want the light high enough above the eye line. You want the light also on an angle because it's going to define your muscles even more. Um, and then the quality of light is really important. Quality is just basically whether a light is very hard or it's very soft. 
A hard light is basically a bare light bulb. A soft light is a light that's diffused. It softens the light up. Soft light is always the best light. Is that is um, soft light? I guess like like um. So let's just say I'm in the gym and the sun's gl- glaring down, and that's kind of all you see is the sun. Is that like a soft light? Yeah. Uh, no, actually. So actually, that's a good scenario. If I'm on the beach and I am getting a suntan, and the sun is directly above me, and there is not a cloud in the sky, that is a hard light. Okay. Now, clouds come in, they blanket the sun, and now that's a soft light. Okay, so it that makes softens, sense. it diffuses it. So like think about your house. You have lamps, but you put shades over those lamps. Why? Because those bulbs are so hard. They're very intense. So to calm that down and give it a nice soft effect, we put those nice shades over it. So, and then that gives a nice diffused look. So diffusion is actually really nice, and it's very complementary for the body. Um, all the all the muscle fitnesses, the fitness models that I work with, everything that I use is a very soft light. If I put a hard light on them, it's only kind of to define maybe an edge light to kind of pop their back out just a little bit more or something. I don't want to get too crazy with it, but if you're just doing a particular selfie, you want to angle your camera and you want a nice soft light to kind of define yourself. Yeah, I can't and, tell you about the soft light, how, how much of a difference that actually makes in, especially the level of leanness that it looks like I'm carrying. It, it might make a difference yeah. in almost 5 6% body fat. You know, I have in my bathroom, I have two switches, so I have the full light switch and then I have the second switch, which I guess is just the softer light. And it's mm-hmm. a, it's much it's much darker, but the shadows land perfectly. Where if I take a picture, you know, I look in the mirror and I see one thing. Then when I switch that light on, take a picture with it, it makes me look so much leaner. Oh my god! Think about and, uh, and this is this may be this may come out funny, but think about when you go into a bar and the light levels are very soft and low, right? Yeah. And then when the bar is done and they want you to go home, they turn all the lights on. And then suddenly, suddenly everybody doesn't look as flattering anymore. It's because true. These hard, <laughs> these hard, it's and then suddenly true. you realize, oh, my God, I'm talking to you. What the yeah, this is who I've been talking to all night. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was talking to this. So soft lighting is very complimentary to the skin. It softens it up. It takes away any blemishes, um, kind of masks a lot of wrinkles. Uh, so what's a soft light? Fluorescent light is soft. Um, Anything that blankets a very hard, specific light, so uh, d- that'll diffuse the light like that. So soft lighting is very complementary. And yes, you're, you're absolutely right, Pete. It's going to define your muscles even more. So basically what you're telling me is the lights I have in my gym, they're too bad. <laughs> I got to change the lights in order to get good pictures, it seems like, because I think I have hard lighting in my gym. So I think that's why every time – because I can't take a photo in my gym – Without everything looking blurry and just bad, yeah. so I think that's the lighting because I have direct overhead light, but it's a hard light. So I think that's something if I ever want really take good pictures in there, I think I have to dim the lights in there almost. And also with, with direct light above, remember the light above is falling down. And when it falls down, it's going to cast shadows down. So if you are directly under the light, all the shadows are going to be in your eyeballs. So you're going to have to step away and just just read where the light's going. And I'm sure in your gym you have mirrors, right? Yeah, yeah. So what you do is you observe where the light is falling in the mirror. So sometimes if you get too close to the under uh, the overhead light, you're going to get the shadows on your face and we're not going to see anything. But if you back up and it's if it is a hard light, it's not going to be as flattering. Um, so you may want to soften those things. I need to come back to New York and just like redecorate your lighting system. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and that, that works. See, you know what it is? Um, Pete alluded to it, but he didn't say it. But what he does and what I try to do too is you take certain progress photos. And not for a vain reason, but you take progress photos just to see like, okay, is my diet working right now? Do I need to yes. change anything? And those pictures always have to be the same and accurate every time. So if I have bad lighting every time, the pictures are never going to show anything. And, I'm, oh, and, and this has always been a problem for me is that – I never feel like I'm making progress based on those pictures. But then when I, I'll catch myself in another mirror and I'll say, or like I'll go by Pete's house and I'll use the same mirror he has and that brings out so much more definition. So it's never um, a good indicator for me. So it's, if you have the right lighting every time, you're able to take those progress pictures and see the huge amount of difference. I mean, Bart, you know when you worked with me for personal training, we took yeah. before and after photos. That wasn't the best lighting, but that's why no. it's important to always make sure the lighting is good. Yeah, I mean, I woke up this morning and, you know, um, I have the sunlight that comes into my into my bedroom. And um, so it beams in on one side and it kind of fills the rest of the room up with this real nice soft light. So I, I, I always get a kick out of looking at myself in the morning because I'm just like I said, if I only look like that 
all the time. <laughs> but it's lighting. The lighting gives me those curves. It gives me the, the edges in my waist area. I could see the definition in my arm. But then I'll go into my bathroom, I'll turn the light on, and it's all gone. And then yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh, my God, this is not good. So, yes, lighting. <laughs> yeah, I look at it, and I'm like, oh, my God, I don't look anything like this. Nobody the hell's wanting to date me. But <laughs> when I'm in a good light, people react to it. And it's not for vanity purposes. It really is to see your progress. And my progress is also going to be saw, seen with the lighting. If I'm seeing a lot of cut in my cyst, in my body with proper lighting, that's going to be better. If I'm literally standing out there and it's full-blown light and it's very hard and it's just harsh, you're not going to see any of the definition. Now, that's just me, but I'm sure on you two, you could probably see definition no matter what light you guys are in. <laughs> you guys yeah. are like six packs and like muscles all over. But, you know, for most Joe Schmo people like myself who um, we don't have six pack of abs, we have like two and a half. So, you know, <laughs> soft, light, soft lighting um, really will show us how we are developing. Hard light kind of blemish, it, take, it just blemishes it out. It kind of washes it out. That's a better word. Mm. Soft light, very good. Yeah, that's. So that's I'm sorry. I just want to mention ahead, one thing because he mentioned washing it out, and that that's a big thing. Anybody who's been on a body bodybuilding stage can relate to. Depending on the venue, uh, most of the time the lighting is overhead on an angle, but sometimes in a different venue they might just put stage lights on the ground angling up, and it's crazy yes. to see the difference that that makes. You know, you diet all this time to get on stage, and then you look at the pictures. And you look all washed out, you know, and then you, mm -hmm. you, you know, if you're not aware of the lighting, you don't realize the lighting actually just took, took a lot away from your physique. Yes. And that's why you'll get some, you, that's why a lot of people, um, whether you're a bodybuilder or not, when they look at themselves in the mirror, they get very frustrated because it's just like nothing's happening. Nothing seems to be working. And a lot has to do with how the room, the space is lit up and that hard light sometimes is a very harsh reality for some people and they feel like there's no progress. Um, when you are on that stage, yeah, those things have to be lit also because it's a competitive area in which people are basing you and judging you on your physique. So you, there should be proper lighting people that are doing that um, to allow, the, allow the, the body to kind of be uh, judged in a proper way. So yeah, certain lights, certain lights going to do that. And if you do it from below, that's going to add a different effect than if you do it above the eye line. So if you're above the eye line, it's going to give you one thing. If you're below the eye line, that's going to give you a whole other kind of contrast. Hmm. So I just want to, you know, I, I want to kind of look at this two ways, you know, using your iPhone and then using a regular camera. Because I know for me, like, I'm, I don't have an interest in photography. I never kind of did. So I'm mm -hmm. not going to go out and purchase like a camera. But for those listening, I'm just going to use my iPhone. That's just me. But um, I'm sure there's some of us listening who are interested in photography. What kind of camera would you kind of recommend for someone who's maybe just starting out who wants to take, you know, better progress photos? Because I know my co-host here, he uses a regular camera sometimes and other times he'll use his phone. Okay. Um, if, you're, if you're serious about – so we'll come off the phone for a second and we'll talk about, uh, let's say, a more, let's say a more um, professional or a more suitable camera that you can take pictures with rather than the phone. Um, and the phone can do a great job. The iPhone 6S is an amazing camera. It has full great, it has a high range of megapixels with great resolution. So that's a great phone to actually work with. But what we're actually looking for when we do take pictures on particular cameras, I work with the Canon 5D Mark III, which is a professional camera. Um, it's a little bit more pricier, but again, I'm a photographer and that's my business. But if you're on more on the consumer end, um, you don't have to go that high. You can go for the Canon Rebel can you can go for the Canon Rebels and they're going to still give you some really great quality. So how do you, what do you do? Well, I would definitely say get yourself uh, a proper zoom lens that will be able to give you a, from a wide perspective to a long perspective. And why is that important? Um, with a zoom lens, you can create what we call as depth of field, which basically means we want certain areas to go out of focus while we focus on specific areas. So when we start working with a zoom lens, it now gives us the option to rate, kind of blur out the background while we focus on the person in the foreground. And then that's going to make them pop out in the photos. And then again, with certain lighting, that's only going to give more quality and define areas there. Um, so I would definitely say get a prosumer camera, like a Canon Rebel. Um, 
And those cameras will always have high megapixels and nice resolution. It's not like you're going to be blowing those things up to make a big book or a poster. You just want them for quality purposes mm -hmm. that you could print out for maybe an 8x10. Um, and they'll give you a good 8x10. So a Canon Rebel TI, I think it's called, those are really good. And get it with a nice zoom lens. And the reason why I say a zoom lens is it gives you an option to go from wide to medium to longer perspectives of things. And by doing a long lens allows you to really get in there without that, really get in there and give me very flattering looking photos and define the person and their eyes and their face and it kind of sculpts them really. Um, where a, and that's a long lens. With a wide lens, you're going to get the full entire body but you can't get too close because it distorts the features. So a long lens can still give you a full body. You just got to kind of move it all the way to the back of the, the bus a bit to get the shot. So what, if, what about the opposite? What if you're really trying to accentuate muscle size? So mm -hmm. you're not really, not really going for cut so much, but you want to show, like, show off like how big you're getting. So what, in that sense, what would you do? I guess using a regular camera than using an iPhone as well. Is there something that you would accentuate using that? Yeah, but, I mean, both cameras are going to work. It's just angling the camera to get the degree that you want. So if you're looking for, if you want to show off more muscles and stuff, um, I would definitely say don't go too far above the eye line because then you're going to start to look small and puny. Um, so you want it at, 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 a, at a particular eye level, maybe just above to kind of flatter yourself in that way. But if you're going to really show, if you... If, are, if you're not the photographer and you're the model, the photographer then usually will be on an angle, usually at the eye level with the subject. And that will then define all the muscles and the chest and the abs and stuff. So we're not talking selfie right now. What we're talking about is photos for a model. So for, let's say, bodybuilding. So I would say... Definitely at an eye level, maybe just slightly above. This way that will define the muscle size. Uh, if you go slightly below the eye line, that will make you look a little bit stronger and bigger. But just be careful of the chin area because then the chin starts to get a little bit bigger underneath. And then you'll say, my God, I didn't think I had a big fat chin. <laughs> and you're actually, you, you don't. It's just that when we go below the eye line, again, we're changing the angle up and it's going to start to make things look a little bit bigger. So just slight alterations in the angle of the camera is always going to – in the angle of the camera and the altitude of the camera. So whether it's a high altitude, meaning above, or a low altitude, meaning below, is actually going to make a big difference in your photos. It's just – it's always just small little degrees of stuff. And like you said before, I go in and I look at myself and I got to move the camera around just a little bit. Yeah, you start to see where it is. And the photographer, that's our job also. We have to move around and see where the best shots are going to be. So now – Obviously, let's just say for a second we're talking about like taking a – so you took a really good picture of yourself, right? Okay, wow, yes. I look great in this, this picture. Now, I want to post it up, but I want to make it look a little extra special. So what favorite – what are your favorite like filters slash like photo touching apps to make pictures look their best? Let's say you did it on your phone and let's say you took it with a real camera. So what would you do in either scenario there? Um, all I usually do is I don't like those filters on my on my on my photos because it it looks just too horrible. It kind of it washes things out a little bit. It gives a little bit more noise. If you want to go for that style, that's fine. I usually just to like fix my contrast, my um, my clarity just a little bit. I'd like to sharpen the photo just a pinch and maybe add a little bit of exposure in case it didn't um, maybe brighten it up just a little bit. Sometimes I'll have to fix the color temperature. It usually is called temperature. And temperature is usually it gets too blue or it gets too, like let's say, orangey. Uh, so sometimes I'll have to fix that up just a little bit. So the, the app that I work with is the, um, the Photoshop app on my phone. It was, it's free. I didn't buy it. Um, so I work with that on my phone. When I'm working with professional models, I have um, I don't do anything on my phone. I do everything in my iMac computer, and I have to put that through my Lightroom program, which is a photography program that helps me to fix my contrast. I get rid of blemishes. Um, I could fix light situations. So if I'm not able to capture certain things, the Lightroom kind of helps to modify or change that. And then there's Photoshop also, which I have Photoshop on my phone, but that's if I'm doing a selfie or a small little thing or before I go post it up on Instagram or Facebook or I don't know what else there is in social media. <laughs> uh, but um, there's so many, Snapchat, whatever that is. Uh, so if I'm, using, if I'm doing a selfie from my phone, I'll put it through the Photoshop app if, um, and I want to quickly put it up. 
If I'm doing professional photos for my models, that's a little bit different. That goes through Lightroom, and then that goes into Photoshop where I have to kind of complete the, um, the photo itself. So that's a little bit different on, in that regard. But some, some filters that I think tend to work, I do like vignetting. I like when the sides around the photo are burnt out. They get yeah, a little like dark. And because then what I'll do is I'll pop my exposure. So this way the, the face pops out or the body pops out a little bit more. And then I burn the edges because then what happens is your eyes are always attracted to the brightest area in the photo. So I'm looking at your photo right now, Anthony, of you in the mirror and you're taking the picture. So what happens is when I look at that photo, I'm not drawn to your physique. I'm drawn to the big flash that you have in the mirror yeah, that covers yeah, your true. face. So I go to that area first, and then I have to look. Where you want your audience to look at your photo first, that's where should be the brightest area. Oh, that so that's sense. where they're going to go. So your eyes will always read the brightest area first because it's drawn to it. It will read the darkest areas last. Huh? That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I actually did that with a, uh, a picture of a pizza that I put on uh, Instagram <laughs> the other day, and apparently it got, it got a lot of likes. So I think they were, <laughs> they were drawn to the aesthetics of the pizza. And this I'm, guy, I'm, he's I'm, always he always jumps ahead, man. He really does. That was at my next question, but go ahead, Bart. Say what you were gonna say. I was gonna say I'm looking at your picture, Pete, and again I'm drawn to the light in the background behind you, and where okay. your your shoulder and your face are are much darker, so you become more of a silhouette there, and your your the lights behind you are much more brighter. So I'm drawn to that. So again, you know, you don't necessarily need light all over the place. You just want to put it in the proper place. So he mentioned it about food, so I will get, I will get yes. into that now. Most fitness people love to take pictures of their food using their smartphone to post on social media. So what kind of tips would you offer them to get more likes on a photo as far as their food goes? Um, so like, what would you do in that sense? So like, all right, you sat down, you, know, you want to show everyone how good you are, you're out to eat, and the food you got looks amazing. So what would you do in that sense to kind of make that photo pop? Definitely um, the angle that you're going to do it at. I'm a big fan of – the food where you take the phone and you're literally directly above it. It looks like a bird's eye view and you kind yeah, of yeah. properly place everything. Um, if you're going to show off your food, make sure your food has color. Reds, greens, um, orange, those things are going to pop your food right out. Meat is a very dark color. There's no real color to meat. It's just a dark looking thing. But if it's surrounded by green and it's surrounded by reds and it's surrounded by, like say, red peppers and green salads and you know all these colors – that's going to pop your food out right away and people are going to notice that and that's what, that's going to look delicious. Again, lighting is important there so you want to have enough soft light in there. You don't want real hard light on your food because then you're going to just be like, ooh, that's disgusting. You want <laughs> soft light on that because again, the soft light just like the body is going to bring out um, the textures and the depth and the, uh, the, the depth meaning the colors and the texture meaning the, the material, the, how the food kind of looks. So again, lighting is going to be dealing with that. Again, I'm a big fan of the above the food as a bird's eye view. But if you can't get the bird's eye view, then what I normally like to do with food is I kind of like to take the food and get it kind of close to the camera. But I like it. Now, there's something called rule of thirds. So if you look at a – we see things horizontally. So now divide that into um, – three spaces. So you have your left side, your middle side, and your right side. So I kind of like to take the food and put it towards the right side of my camera, maybe a little bit in the, the center, but closer to the right. And then this way, the left side tends to be a little bit blank. So what happens is we tend to read left to right. So we'll start to read as we go across the image. Uh, and then what we're going to read is this beautiful food waiting for us at the opposite end of that um, print at the end of the end of the frame. And once you have colors, your eyes going to go crazy. It's going to just start reading the food all over the place. Wow, that's a good that's actually a good, you know, point you brought up there because Pete Bra talking about your pizza picture, mm -hmm. I think the picture is more the the picture of the pizza is actually more toward the left as opposed to the right. So the right kind of cuz I I don't even have the picture in front of me, but I remember it. you kind of took it more up front and as your eyes walk away from that picture, you kind of see like more of the pizza in the background versus when you first see it it's the pizza's right there. I'm actually going on Instagram right now to pizza. I want to see this picture. <laughs> Apparently, it was a great picture of a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe good, it was just a good-looking pizza to begin yeah, with. That's good old New York pizza. You can't get that in Cali, right? But that, oh, is it? Yeah, you don't get good pizza out here. I have to admit. I have to admit. I haven't had like real good pizza. Like, there's. I miss Romeo's on Cross Bay Boulevard. Their grandma pizza. 
Yeah, it's been a while since I had that too. It's been a while yeah. since I had grandma pizza in general. Okay, so I'm actually looking at your photo right now, and I love the darkness in the background, and I love the brightness in the foreground with it. And that, I'm, I would totally eat that pizza, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but you see what I mean? How hit the picture, the pizza starts on the left side versus what you just said? Yes. So I, I think that you brought up a good point. If you would have had it shifted maybe the other way, it would have brought it out a little bit more. I could. I mean, what I like about this photo is definitely how it gets from. Um, you could definitely see how the light is bouncing off of the oil and cheese, and then as we further go away, you can see where there is no more light, so it gets darker. Um, if I had to recommend what to do with the photo, I would definitely either a have come fully up and taken a bird's eye view of it, um, or get real close in and get into that cheese and that thickness and that real good texture of the oil to kind of real sell that. But I'm actually sitting here right now and I'm like, God, I'm hungry for pizza right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bart, one of the things that I always notice with all your pictures, and again, I follow you on social media since you moved to Cali and I can't have a conversation with you anymore in person. <laughs> so I have to follow you on social media. But one of the things you always do great in the picture, <clears throat> and I'm looking at your Skype picture too, you always know how to like capture a moment. You really capture yourself in a moment really, really well. And I feel like I don't do that good enough. And I could, I, I guess I could speak for my co-host when I say that. So like your Skype picture I'm looking at is you like with your hand over your mouth, but it's a funny picture because I feel like you capture that moment correctly. So for a fitness picture, I know most people try to take pictures more um, dramatic and I get that. But what if you're, you're just trying to showcase your personality and you want to like catch that image, like how you, how you do most of your pictures? Um, the way that I tend to get my pictures is what you're seeing is one image out of so many. And the thing with me is I do not take myself seriously. Like, I mean, if you look at my Facebook profile picture, I'm literally sitting, I'm literally lying down on my bed, purposely putting my hand behind my head with the Jason hockey mask next to me with a Jason t-shirt popping a bicep out. It is meant to be funny. But at the same time, it took, and I'm not kidding you when I say this, it took about 20 shots to get that. Wow. And at first, it was not on the bed, and I didn't know how to angle it. And I did, it, It's a trial and error thing sometimes. And if you know a good angle for yourself, work with that angle all the time. For me, the left side of my face is better photographed than the right side of my face is. Um, you do that's and that's again that's not vanity I'm a photographer so you tend to work with models and you get to know what is a better side for you what is not I again I don't take myself seriously so I can poke fun at myself and I don't mind so I try not to do the dramatic shots all the time and I think when we go for it it kind of comes out hokey so I'll always kind of want to make people laugh at it and so what I do is realize that okay I gotta try it from this angle this angle I like the light that was coming in through the bedroom because that's all natural light that's yeah not I'm flash. looking at the picture as you speak and you could actually based on what you said before where your eyes go first is the brightest part and you could see the brightest part is the right the that side of your face and the mm -hmm. mask certain parts yes. of the mask is light up so that's the first thing you kinda see and then you're, you're hundred percent right now that you said that I'm looking at the brightest part first and then everything else after Yes. So the brightest part should be the, I believe it's the, the probably mask. the left side of my face or yeah. something. And then yeah, you and travel the over to the mask. And then the mask, because the mask has this deep red, orangey look to it. So you have these two faces that are almost in contrast, my kind of um, Caucasian skin with the Jason hockey mask. And, you know, you read that right across. And again, it took I'd say about 20 pictures to do it. And most people would be like, you spent 20 pictures taking a picture of yourself. Well, I was in that kind of a mood and, you know, I was, <laughs> I was sending it to somebody that I liked and, you know, but yeah, it took 20 pictures to get it. And if I didn't get it, I wouldn't have posted it. So the camera is your, the, the camera is writing your story, let's say. So it's not always going to be the first picture that you take. It is going to be multiple images that you come down to one that eventually gets the shot. If you are very aware of where you photograph best and what angle you photograph, then that's what you got to keep hitting it with. Um, because then what you're going to realize is I work better on this side than I work better on that side. So I'd rather show this off than I'd rather show that off. Mm -hmm. So when you are working with a selfie, I don't ever use my right hand for my selfie because I don't like the way my right side of my face looks. It's silly to say it, but I, I, under, I could read the way, my, the way my bone structure is. So I use, always use it from my left hand, so then it comes into my left first, and then the, the right tends to go to the dark side. That's interesting. It's really, really interesting. You so, did, I mean, 
after a while you do pick up I mean again like I said you know I am a photographer and I read things well and I teach this to students when we are working with models and we're working with film work and stuff like that yeah I mean you know one of the things you said also that and and that you again you must be you know me way too well uh, I don't have the patience to sit there and snap 20 pictures I'll snap like one or two and I'm like ah oh, this one looks better and, I, and it goes up and that hence why I think my pictures are always some quality when I put them out <laughs> so I think I got to start taking more of that but I think I think you're 100% right you know it's an artwork and anything in fitness is kind of artsy you know like trying yes. to build a better body and you're trying to build up certain areas to make yourself kind of look a certain way and you have to have that kind of artist touch so this is why I'm I'm so excited to get you to come on today because I know that you have this ability to do that with your pictures. And hopefully, I think based on everything that we said so far, people are going to take away a lot from it. I know I did. So let's, let's I was gonna of, say, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I was going to say there's bodybuilding out here in photography is enormous. There's a huge, huge um, business out here for photographers who want to do bodybuilders. And I'm just – just getting started with it. I mean, much of my work is Art Mel Nudes because that's the book that I'm putting out right now. But the business that I want to work in now is definitely photographing bodybuilders and, and muscle guys because I think there's such an art form to it and there, there's a representation of strength that comes with that. Yeah. So now let's reverse that kind of the um, that end of the picture. So now, again, the dramatic using a dramatic effect. So how can we create the right setting to create a more dramatic looking picture? Just remember your eyes are everything to that photo. Um, so if you're going to showcase your face uh, or your body, it's really going to be about your eyes. So everybody, it's, it's the personality that's in the face. So if we're looking at a photo and you are showing pretty much your face with it, it's your eyes that are going to do it. You don't want to squint them. You don't want them to be like superly open um, where they look, you know, they're, they're kind of about ready to fall out of your head. You just want a subtlety to come with it. Let your eyes like tell your story there. Um, and again, it's just, if you're doing a selfie, just look at it, look at yourself, say, Hey, this looks okay. Oh, my eyes are a little too squinted here, or I just need to pop them open a little bit more and then snap the photo. Uh, so your eyes are going to say everything, uh, along with the lighting, um, that's going to pop those, those babies out and your eye will tell the stories and people are very drawn to the eyes. They'll be drawn to the body, obviously, if that's what you're going to show them, but they're always drawn to the face first because that's where the soul tends to reside in is that we can read the eyes. And what what about – sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but what about the the setting as far as adding that dramatic effect too? Because a lot of people that do take selfies, they might just take them in their bedroom or wherever the lighting is. But then a lot of people like to put something in the background to enhance that. Yeah, background is a big thing. Um, you know, having an interesting background is only going to make the foreground more flattering. So, you know, you don't want to overdo the background because then that's going to take away from the foreground. So you don't want to overdo the background, therefore it's going to take away from you. Nice curtains or maybe blow the light out just a little bit behind you is always very nice. Um, you always do need something in the background. You should probably not have like a big ugly light that's on. Uh, and I see that all the time. Um, but you know, if you are in your bedroom, I would say, you know, kind of create it, you know, maybe put the light on the back just a little bit, a little bit of a touch of a light over there. A nice lamp next to you is usually good. There's this nice subtlety that comes with it. I find too many people just pick the phone up and they click and they're like, Hey, this is what I look like. And I look at it. I'm like, Oh, come on. Just put a little bit more thought and effort into it. That's me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah, background to me is it, background says a lot. It really does. If you're getting into professional photography, background is everything uh, because it really will complement your subject: skin tone, colors of the uh, color of the wardrobe or lack of wardrobe. Um, it really will complement it. And if you're going for nothing in the background, then it should be completely in the dark, in the shadows. And that's that's also very interesting to work with. Hmm. All right, Bart. If we could sum this up for everybody. What kind of um, lasting effects can we give everyone as far as like takeaways? Uh, I would definitely say if you are interested in taking pictures of yourself in selfies, um, then I would say definitely start learning how what angles work best for you and what side of your face works best for you. I would also say if you have a decent camera, whether it's the iPhone 6 or, or another kind of available phone that gives quality images, then start working with proper lighting to do that. Now, I'm not saying go get a lighting rig or something, but you know, a nice soft light coming in through your window. Um, 
try and stay away from, you know, the fluorescent bulbs that are hanging over in, you know, your gym and stuff like that. If you're doing a quick shot just to see how you're looking, that might be one thing. But if you're going to, if you want to show flattering results, then you're going to have to think a little bit more on the quality. And so definitely the angle where the light is, the softness of the light to do that for yourself. If you, if you want to show off more physique and stuff, come down a little bit from your eye line. So this way you're kind of just below the eye line a little bit and that will pump out your shoulders, that will pump out your chest just a little bit more. Don't put the wide angle lens close to your face. <laughs> that will distort your features. You're going to look weird. Um, rather, turn it around into a mirror and now you have the option of moving forward or backward using the lens with your with the um, with the phone if you're using professional kind of equipment particularly like the rebel the Canon rebel TI camera then I would suggest getting a nice zoom lens uh, so this way you have options of going from an extreme wide angle to an extreme long angle so this way you can I would say always go for a longer shot because you're gonna make the subject just look more flattering because the background will go out of focus and that will pop them out perfect all right guys well I'm Go ahead. You, you I was gonna to... say, and try not to over filter your pictures because it's just gonna it'll make the situation worse. <laughs> Boy, man, what, you've been following me on social media for a while, huh? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this episode was directed purely at me, guys. <laughs> but what I'm gonna do, Bart, I'm actually gonna add you to our New York Muscle Radio group. So if you guys have any questions about you know your pictures or want some comments, I'll have Bart in there, and uh, he'll come in and he'll look at them. So again, if you guys aren't members of our Facebook group, again, just Facebook, um, New York Muscle Radio, find the group and I'll accept you in and then I'll add Bart to it. So if you have any other questions following this up, you can ask him in there. But um, again, if you guys are in Cali area and you're interested in having a photographer come for, come shoot you, Bart's definitely the guy. Bart, where can anyone find out more about you? Uh, you could definitely go to bartmastronardiphotography.com. Um, you could find me, excuse me, on my Instagram, it's bartmastronardi photography. Also, my Facebook is bartmastronardi, or you could go to the bartmastronardi photography page on Facebook. I do have a Twitter account, but I don't really use it too much. But you can contact me there. So if you know how to spell my last name, and that that's pretty much it. So it's Bart Mastronardi. On Instagram, it'll be photography. On Facebook, it'll just be my name. And you ha I have my website, bartmestronautiphotography.com. And uh, so you could definitely contact me there. I'd be more than happy to talk to people and um, work with them and trying to get them into to creating better images for themselves. And like I said, you know, this guy, he came to me um, a little over a year now, and we it's, totally changed his life. And I was, uh, oh my God, it was, I was 196 pounds. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he looks totally different now, and I'm so happy to see him in California living out his dream. And it's just nice to talk to you and catch up. So thank you so much for coming on, man. You know, I really, really appreciate it. And I know my co-host here is going to be so happy taking new new pictures of himself. Oh, I'm, go I'm going right to the bathroom and playing with the lighting now. <laughs> Wait, listen, okay. no, no one cares what you're going to the bathroom and doing. Right? <laughs> candlelight, candlelight is also very nice. That's very dramatic. Yes, that is. That's very dramatic. It's very dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pete, it's your turn, bud. All right, guys, Pete and Anthony with Bart Master and Artie, New York Muscle Radio, and we're out. Enjoyed this episode of New York Muscle Radio? Make sure to hit that subscribe button, leave us a five-star review, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, New York Muscle Radio.